Well, thank you, uh, Mr Speaker, and congratulations on your elevation to the role of Speaker uh, in uh, this 58th Parliament. What a wonderful achievement uh, and something that uh, I believe that we are all in good hands uh, under your stewardship. Well, I nervously... <laughs> Uh, Mr Speaker, I seek an extension. <laughs> I, I nervously stand here today full of hope and optimism. I will firstly admit the nerves of mine, but the hope and optimism are for the great people of the mighty Richmond and Clarence Valleys, which make up my electorate. I'd like to firstly acknowledge the First Nations people of the Clarence electorate and pay my respects to the elders, pasts, present and emerging of the Bundjalung, the Gumbangir and the Yagel nations. I acknowledge Aboriginal culture as the longest living culture in the world. I wouldn't be standing here today with it without the love and support of my wife, Leonie, up there. Uh, mum and dad, mum's here, dad's on the farm. Uh, my uh, sister and brother-in-law, Kate and Ryan, their kids, Will and Izzy, uh, my brother, Bear, Sheila, uh, my uh, mother and father-in-law, uh, Dave and Sue. Many have travelled here today to be with me uh, in, the, in the gallery, and I thank you all very, very much. Uh, also, a number of people that couldn't make it today, but I know that will be watching at home. Leslie Ross, Peter Johnson, Sandra and Terry Bryan, Alison Waits, Julie and Matt McKee, Cody Pracy, Cole and Judy Humphreys, and many, many more. You've all encouraged me uh, to aim for the stars while keeping my feet firmly planted on the ground. I'd like to acknowledge the members of the New South Wales National Party who entrusted me in our brand and our reputation to hold the seat of Clarence. To every member who put up a sign, letterboxed, door knocked, spread the good word of the nationals, stood on polling booths when it rained, the stinking heat, you did it. Together we did it, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. A special acknowledgement to my campaign team. What can I say? You guys know elections and you know how to win. To Joe Lundy, Andrew Fraser and all of the HQ staff, you guys are rock stars. Our campaign in the Clarence was well funded, it was disciplined uh, and hit the mark. And I can assure each and every person in our electorate of Clarence, you will never be taken for granted. We never have and we never will. To my new parliamentary colleagues, thank you for your support in my campaign and our campaign. I look forward to standing here in this place to stand up for regional New South Wales. Our story in the bush is vibrant and is strong. Standing up for the bush is in our DNA. A special mention to my newly elected Nationals colleagues, the member for Mile Lakes uh, and the member for Oxley. Congratulations to you both. It's a, an honour to be standing here with you in this place. But I'd also like to acknowledge each and every single Nationals candidate who stood in the state election. As we all know in this place, electioneering is hard. It is hard yakka, uh, it is at times thankless, and it, it, it is at times lonely. To each and every person who hasn't got the privilege to stand here today, like I have, uh, thank you. You did yourselves and our party proud. To Chris Galaptis, who strongly encouraged me to start with a song, uh, thank you for your tireless work. He did. Uh, he even named the song, but I won't, I, I won't divulge. Uh, your tireless work for our, election, uh, for our electorate uh, has uh, been acknowledged by many, uh, but the work you did on my campaign was second to none. I thank you and Vicky, and I hope you have a long and healthy retirement from this place. To my electorate staff, Demi Newton, Janet Gould, Greg Bailey, Rod Gould, and to my new staff member, Chris Chevalley, welcome. Uh, thank you for the service that you do to the people of the Clarence electorate. Your work does not go unnoticed by me, nor does it not go unnoticed by the people you serve every day. Sadly for me, Rod, uh, Janet, and Greg are moving on under the terms of retirement. Uh, uh, you are great friends and you're always welcome back for a chat and a cuppa. To, uh, 
to Premier Minns, to your ministers and your government, I wish you well in this term. When it's all said and done, we are all here on Team New South Wales. I will support the good. I'll respectfully disagree and put an opposing view when the interests of my electorate uh, are not being served well. After all, this place is the great melting pot of ideas. The responsibility and privilege of this job is not lost on me. There are over 8 million people in the great state of New South Wales. 93 have the extreme privilege of sitting right here. So how does a kid from a place called Coots Crossing, 18 kilometres south of Grafton, come to be standing in the New South Wales Parliament? You know, we all have a story to tell. As kids, we, have a loving, we had a loving home. Uh, Mum and Dad worked hard to ensure we got a good education. We lived in a modest, modest home in Coots Crossing with plenty of room to be kids. With the people I admired the most, my grandparents, Paul and Norma, Ozzie and Tup, and late, Leada, uh, later in life, Leonie's pop, Graham Hanson, always nearby with some good advice and, I have to say, the occasional correctional guidance as required. Size nine. Uh, my, my first job was working for Dick and Sue Crabb at the Coots Crossing store on Saturday morning. Then at the age of 16, Ron Bell gave a young bloke a start at 2GF in Grafton, a job that I really loved and held for 32 years and I believe had me deeply connected to my community. I was fortunate to serve 16 and a bit years on Clarence Valley Council and eight of those as Mayor. I have a real passion about where I live and where I was born and I want to make sure that we can be the best we can possibly be. We need as a community uh, support from governments of all persuasions so we can thrive. I accept elections are about politicians. After all, you're guaranteed to get one after it. No doubt. But this place is not about politicians. This place is about people, the good citizens of the fine state of New South Wales and closer to home for me, the great people of the Richmond and Clarence Valleys that make up my electorate. My electorate has a long and proud history, first proclaimed in 1859, the same year as Queensland. I wish I could say we'd been beating them at football ever since, but I cannot. <laughs> and was the home of one of the founding members of the, the country party, Sir Earl Christmas Grafton Page. A giant of his time, a giant of our, of our party, and the godfather of the coalition. In 1920, he dreamt big, dreaming up public infrastructure like the Nimboida Hydro Power Station, which powered the entire North Coast. He opened it in 1924 when he was Federal Treasurer. Sir Earl Page dreamt big and his fingerprints are still evident in my electorate today. The first member of Clarence was Mr Clark Irving, a seat that he held for just a few years, but has been held with, by some great names, Bill Wiley, Matt Singleton, Don Day, Ian Causley, Harry Woods, Steve Kansdell and of course Chris Galaptis. Some fine people that have set the bar high. But it's the people of the Clarence that make us a community. The thriving community of Casino, where Primex is being held this very week, bringing thousands of visitors to town. That's closely followed up by Beef Week from May 20, 10 days of all things beef and country life. Some great community events, breakfast with the butchers, live music, the Beef Week Queen, the Beef Week Cups, both horse racing and greyhound racing. Uh, and uh, the, what I believe is the most famous part of it all, Cowpat Lotto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if anyone needs to a little bit of understanding of Cowpat Lotto, yeah. it involves a cow, a fair bit of feed, a grid on the ground with numbers on it, and an unspecified amount of time. Nature <laughs> will take its course. <laughs> the villages of Broadwater, Ratville, Corakai, Woodburn, uh, Whipparee and the coastal paradise of Evans Head. Evans Head is the home of the Memorial Aerodrome Heritage Aviation Museum. The Heritage listed aerodrome was one of the largest Royal Australian Air Force training bases in World War II. To the sugar cane and the fishing grounds of the Lower Clarence Valley, Yamba, with its uh, stunning beauty and beaches right on the mouth of the Clarence. 
On the other side of the creek, Iluka, the World Heritage listed rainforests and its walks, great camping and family friendly holidays. Maclean, the Scottish town in Australia, home of the Maclean Highland Gathering each Easter. Grafton, the Jacaranda city, the home of the oldest floral festival in Australia. The Jacaranda festival is a must each November, the Grafton Cup. Grafton was the first city on the North Coast and I believe home to one of the most famous sporting rivalries in New South Wales, country New South Wales at least, the Grafton Ghosts and the South Grafton Rebels football local derby. Or if you're on the south side of the river, the South Grafton Rebels v Grafton Ghosts game. <laughs> Hanani, Cowper, Brushgrove, Olmara, Coppenhurst, all the villages that make up the fabric of my electorate, some 13,500 square kilometres in size. To the people of the Clarence electorate, I will be your advocate in this parliament. I will bring us to Sydney and promise not to bring Sydney to you. Our area, area Mr Speaker, has been dealt some rough hands. If it wasn't the drought, it was the fires which destroyed hundreds of homes in my electorate. And if it wasn't the fires, it was the biblical sized floods that displaced thousands. And Mr Speaker, thousands were displaced. Today, hundreds still remain without a home. All this while coping with COVID-19, we will recover. We are strong and resilient up north. We have to be. Mr Speaker, my, my electorate has some challenges before us. The, 20, uh, the 2022 floods have left a scar on my community that is not healed, but are slowly healing. I've spoken and listened to school students who are still not back in their schools following the floods. Moving the entire school to a short-term location is a huge and commendable effort. But I, and I would say their communities, want to see their schools, their students, back at school. What a great shot in the arm for those communities uh, that have suffered greatly. I'm not saying this is anyone's fault, Mr Speaker, uh, but it highlights the enormity of the job at hand following the floods. Mr Bob May, an 85-year-old, was rescued from his home at Woodburn at 5am in the morning of uh, the floods, wading through floodwaters waist deep rescued by two complete strangers, now called Tinny Heroes. To quote Bob, those blokes saved my life. Mr May, Mr May, at his age, wants to move to higher ground. Buybacks are the go for him, but progress is slow, but is being made. Robin Jen Kelly, whose farm and home are on the banks of the Richmond River. The river was running at such force that it eroded uh, the riverbank to three metres of their living room. The Kellys want to move to higher ground, some 35 to 40 metres away, uh, to a higher, safer location. Again, progress is slow, but is being made. Two examples, Mr Speaker, that is amplified hundreds of times across the Lower Clarence Valley. One thing I do know uh, is floods have brought out the best in Australians, in Australians. Strangers helping strangers, feeding and housing others, in total shock at what happened. Selfless deeds like Fiona from the Riverside Butchery in Korokai. Their business lost $48,000 worth of equipment and $25,000 worth of stock, but they still gave and are giving today, cooking weekly hot meals for the community because some people in her community still don't have a kitchen to cook in. The butchery continues to donate meat at, at cost price. And can I say now is the best time ever to buy local. Small businesses are hurting, but I hope things will get better. The road ahead at times seems bumpy and impassable, but we will absolutely get the job done. I will stand beside each and every person, family and community along the way. Investing in healthcare in the Clarence remains a priority for me. I'll work with the community and the government to ensure uh, that we continue to get our fair share and build on the infrastructure we need, like the new ambulance stations in Iluka, Evans Head and Casino. I'm ready to work with the Health Minister and the Government on the redevelopment of Grafton Base Hospital. But we need to look to the future. We need to dream big with the community. So we might need to start looking at what happens at McLean and Casino hospitals. These hospitals are punching well above their weight. I believe, Mr Speaker, the Clarence electorate should be mining free. 
Our natural beauty, our pristine waterways, our prime farmland and national parks should not be put at risk, even if that risk is classified as minor. Mr Speaker, this is not a Greens campaign, but one that is community led by local families, farmers, Aboriginal leaders, tourism managers and the general community who don't want to see mining in the upper reaches of the Clarence River. I agree, there is simply too much to lose. Mr Speaker, the Clarence River prawning industry is on its knees through no fault of their own. The livelihoods of 90 fishing families and 60 staff are at risk due to a control order for the movement of green prawns following the discovery of white spot in prawn farms. Overnight, livelihoods of these businesses and farms, many of them decades in the making, were taken away with zero compensation or little or no compensation from any government. I believe this place can do better, or I fear the prawning industry on the Clarence might slowly disappear. Housing remains a major issue, uh, and I've heard it more than once here today. We need to do better on housing. Sometimes simply finding a roof to put over our heads is out of reach for many and varied ways. I commend the Northern Rivers Reconstruction Commission, who aimed to find 10,000 blocks on the Northern Rivers for development. Uh, let's get innovative and find ways to ensure that affordable housing blocks remain affordable forever. I'm sure there are schemes uh, that we can use throughout New South Wales, but we need to get creative. I've now formed the view and the opinion that short-term holiday rental market is in, in, in residential zones is having a detrimental effect on the long-term residential housing market. The idea that was simply letting out a room to make a few extra bucks has quickly moved to an entire house. In turn, taking that property off the long-term rental market, more policy needs to be done in this area as a matter of urgency. Mr Speaker, every decision this place makes can make it easier or harder for the people of our great state can make it more expensive or less expensive to live, can, can cut red tape or green tape or add to it. Every decision in this place counts for my electorate and the people of our great state. Mr Speaker, I am ready to serve my thriving community and I stand with them in the good times and in the bad. But my message to each and every person is dream big. We need to build the public infrastructure and modern community needs and deserves. We need to invest in our people of this great state. Mr Speaker, I'm going to finish where I started today. I stand here full of hope and optimism for the people of the Clarence electorate and I thank them for this great honour. I also thank my parliamentary colleagues and this House for their indulgence today. Thank you.